Okay, here I've got my Aerotech DMS delay drilling tool that I'm going to be drilling into the H219 motor. And again, this motor is set up with a, an automatic 14 second delay in it. And I want to take that down to 7 seconds. So the way we get 7 seconds drilled out of this is to take our guide and set it up for the 8 second removal. And then we're going to remove 1 second from that. So if I put the 8 second mark down on the motor and then I add one more second to that which is a 1 32nd inch spacer that I've got on my drill that'll instead of taking out eight seconds this is going to keep it back a little bit and only take it out seven seconds so with that we're going to attempt <laughs> my first time ever using this to drill into the delay charge And I do feel some resistance, which is good. It means we're making contact. I had it calibrated properly. Okay, I definitely feel it going into the core. And there we bottomed out. And let me just spin it a few more rotations at that level. Okay, there we go. And let's see if I can pull it out. And yep, there's our our excess. Okay. So I'll dispose of that properly. I'll take it out in the back and burn it in a safe place to dispose of it. But there we go. We just removed seven seconds from our 14 second delay. So now this is set for a seven second delay. So fingers crossed, this will get us a good deployment up near the apogee point. So this is ready for uh, to install the uh, the deployment charge powder. Okay, we're about a week out from our maiden flight on the Zephyr and I just want to go over a few final things with you as far as the balance of it and how we have everything set up internally as far as our parachute system, our recovery, our altimeter system, the electronics. Uh, just kind of go over a brief overview of how it is ready to fly and we'll go over some numbers as well. But one thing I want to show you is installing the motor. As you know, we're running the Aerotech DMS H219 and let me take it out of its tube and I'll install it and I'll show you how we balance the rocket. So here's the motor and this motor uses the Aeropack retainer system so we simply insert the motor and then we screw the cap on to lock it into place. Now I've already inserted all the electronics and the parachute on board. Really the only thing missing inside is the wadding, which I'm going to use the cellulose fiber insulation material that's fireproof, flame resistant, and it weighs almost nothing and it's going to be packed in behind the chute. So it's going to be near the CG point anyway, so it's really neither here nor there on the balance changes it may, may have. But other than that, we're going to go ahead and, and show you how I've got everything situated on the inside. The nose cone simply slides right off. And right off the bat, you're going to see I've got anchored to it my two altimeters. I've got the Flight Sketch Mini and also the Jolly Logic Altimeter 2. They're going to be anchored to one of the, the fish hooks. I've got a quarter inch 
um, hold down lock attached to the nose cone to which I've got both the parachute and the shock cord mounted to. Now let me go ahead and continue to pull this out. Let me actually just lay this down. I'll show you how we've got everything situated. There we have it. Now, one thing I did also modify, the kit comes with a 36 inch parachute. However, the field that we're gonna be flying off of is really hard packed, it's a dry lake bed, and I wanted a little bit softer landing. Of course, you want the softest landing you can imagine, possibly. Um, the other thing too is wind. If there's no wind at all, this bigger parachute will be ideal. If there's a lot of wind, I may like to go back to the 36 inch, but what I did do was I got a 48 inch parachute. So just imagine this thing is four foot diameter. Um, it's Apogee, just like the 36 inch was, kind of got a silky feeling to it. But unlike the plastic parachutes that you get in the smaller rockets, these things don't conform to the, the folded up shape, so it'll open up a lot easier. So in addition to this, I've also got the parachute protector that is tied onto the shock cord just, uh, I'd say that's about an inch or two, just outside of the tube. And when it comes time to pack this at the field, I'm just gonna simply insert the wadding down underneath the parachute protector. Use the parachute protector kind of as a cap. And then insert the chute into the protector and then slide that whole thing down as one assembly. And then, and I didn't pack. I didn't pack the shoe properly because I didn't anchor the lines in it like I normally would. But uh, this is more just a kind of a weight and balance demonstration. But then simply we'll insert the parachute cord. Our I think 15 feet of shock cord. So a lot, a lot of shock cord. And then like I said, the altimeters, all the electronics are going to be anchored up in front. And I'm going to run both altimeters in case one fails to operate. I'll at least have. Uh, one that'll be reading information. They each have their pros and cons, and you may have seen on some of my other videos uh, the, what differences they have and what what capabilities they have. And then you just simply insert the nose cone on top of that, and she's ready to fly. Now, one thing I did do off camera was I took out the rail buttons and I just put a dab of blue thread lock on each screw. Uh, that way I can take them out if need be but they're pretty locked in and glued in place on their own but it's not so permanent that I can't remove the screw and replace the button if these wear out. So that's one thing I did. The other thing I did was I went ahead and measured my center of pressure and center of gravity. The online informational tutorial on the Zephyr indicates that the center of pressure point is 114 centimeters from the tip of the nose cone way up here, back, and that's where I identified my center of pressure. That's always going to remain constant. The center of gravity may change as the payloads change, but for standard purposes with that large parachute and my altimeters up front, this is a really good ballpark figure. But what I did was I took a string and I just wrapped it around the body tube and I kept lifting it until I could get a, a nice even balance and I identified that evenness right at this point here. So this, this point here, roughly six inch, I, in fact, it's 13 and a half centimeters from the center of pressure to the center of gravity. The only other thing I did was I drilled out three holes, each at 120 degrees around the circumference of the body tube in order to let outside air pressure in and equalize internally so the altimeters can actually read the change of pressure on the barometer for altimeter reading. So again, those holes were drilled. The center of gravity and the center of pressure were identified. The rail buttons were screwed in with thread lock. I went ahead and did the full center of gravity check with the motor installed, the parachutes, and the altimeters. So everything is all set. So this is a real short video on the Zephyr, but I did want to let you know what final things we did to it prior to flight. So fingers crossed, Lord willing, we'll have a successful flight on Friday. And um, if all goes well, maybe I'll do another flight on Saturday, but we'll see. So hoping uh, all goes well. So anyway, that's that wraps up this video. Thanks for following along and, you know, 
following this journey. This has been an absolute blast to build. You guys saw when I first opened the package, all the way through the construction, through the final paint, and now you've seen it ready to fly with the mechanicals ready to go. Um, I will point out one other thing to you. After I applied the decals, I did not put a clear coat on the rocket. I elected to put a coat of polish on it. I may put a coat of wax on it um, and sometime in the near future, but for now, I'm just going to stick with the polish. Um, that kind of gives it a, a, you know, a shine, gives it a coating to protect the paint and help keep the decals down on the surface. So other than that, uh, like I said, be praying for a light winds. I'm really hoping for a good calm day. The last couple months out there at the lake bed, it's been pretty gusty. So I'm hoping we get some favorable winds and some sunny skies. Blue skies would be great. Um, I'm expecting approximately, oh, let, let me show you that. I do want to share with you some calculations that I came up with. By running the thrust curve online calculations, this rocket with its weight running that motor, I'm expecting an apogee of 364 meters, which is approximately 1194 feet. So I'm, I'm pushing 1200 feet apogee on this, uh, the initial flight with that Aerotech 219. So I'll plug that into my um, flight card when I present it to the launch director and we'll see what the altimeters tell me. If I, I'm hoping I come within you know, 10 to 20 feet of that would be a, a success for me. But uh, a, a true success would be this thing flies, lands successfully, and I get my level one certification. After all, that's what this is all about. So thanks again for following along and all your support. The comments have been great on the, on the, on the video comments. And um, I've tried to respond to everybody as best I can. I'll continue to do so. So please continue to uh, offer your comments, recommendations, any advice you may have. Again, this is all new to me, but I'm learning as I progress, and I've had a lot of help from, from the local community as well as the online community. So thanks again, everybody. Uh, we'll see you at the field. God bless.